If you're thinking about watching the Netflix documentary, The Program, Cons, Cults, and Kidnapping, just know the accounts and imagery you'll see can be horrifying and distressing to view. But that doesn't mean it's not worth watching. No talking, no smiling, no going outside. The Academy at Ivy Ridge claimed to use therapy and recreational activities to help troubled teens. Instead, teens suffered mental and physical abuse in a program that operated like a cult. In this investigative docuseries, a filmmaker and other former students recall their horrific experiences attending a disciplinary school and expose the horrors of the troubled teen industry. So to call the program a documentary may be a bit misleading. I mean, it's not a fictional drama, but this is more of an expose than an unbiased examination of a reform school facing a ton of horrendous allegations. And I don't say that as a bad thing, because the people creating this docu-expose were actually students who attended these academies. So they speak as primary sources from first-hand accounts. Katie Kubler is both the victim and documentarian in this. The presentation feels a bit like Morgan Spurlock's Super Size Me, but with a much, much heavier narrative. Now, Carrie D. narrates a lot of the accounts, telling her experiences through voiceovers and then a ton of on-camera, guerrilla-style filmings. She's also joined by several other survivors of the Academy at Ivy Ridge, each with their own terrible and haunting accounts that are both simultaneously very unique and almost identical. Now, at first, I thought that because this was three almost hour-long episodes, the content may feel dragged out or repetitive. But well before the first episode was over, I was completely enthralled. But I also was disgusted at what I was hearing, and I was planning in my head ways that the world should deal with people who do these sorts of things to kids, and they would be torturous and very drawn out. Now, it's sickening enough to hear just about Ivy Ridge, but then we're shown the much larger network that was running this and many other schools. I mean, there was rampant abuse, a lot of it documented in video footage. (laughs) That's another thing, too. What these now adults are revealing are backed up by written and video evidence, and even through some staff interviews. When Ivy Ridge shut down, they just abandoned the buildings and left everything behind, so Katie and the others were able to rifle through mounds and mounds of student records that detailed every sort of abuse that was heaped on the kids. They also, they come across more than a pile of security cam footage. It's almost like the Academy was proud of their crimes and torment and were saving the evidence for posterity, maybe for a company holiday party or even staff recruitment. And before I say more about this, while this is sad and heartbreaking, it's also inspiring to see these kids face some of their abusers and begin to find some semblance of closure. Not all of them are at that point, and most of them are going to live with varying degrees of PTSD their entire lives. But we are left with the impression of hope from those who participated in the documentary. They're working to move forward, and they showcased an enormous amount of strength and resolve. Now, I'm surprised at some of the interviews that Katie and her crew were able to perform. There are a couple of former staff who acknowledge the roles that they played in mistreating the kids. But then there are also those who deny any sort of wrongdoing, or maybe they point the finger at somebody else. And while it's unfortunately not shocking where some of the abusers ended up, it really should be. I mean, a few that were told about never answered for their crimes. Instead, they just moved on to other avenues in which they can continue that cycle of abuse. Now, something interesting that's highlighted in this is how the parents of these kids who were placed in the academies were gaslit and brainwashed into believing that their kids were thriving and succeeding in the program. I mean, after all, the whole reason most of these kids were sent to places like this were because they were acting out or were being unruly. Now, some of us just call that being a teenager. Others, especially the stricter and legalistic religious types, they saw this as sinful and deviant behavior. And without stern correction, they'd be lost to the wiles of a damned society. Now, in some ways, it can make a bit of sense at what the parents were being told and shown. I mean, it was highly controlled but I still think there had to be at least a small level of complicity to blatantly ignore any signs that the kids would display as a result of spending time in these detention centers. I mean, it came across that the parents were so disconnected from their kids and the way that their kids functioned normally that they couldn't even recognize that the littlest thing was wrong. Then, to make matters worse, we're shown how Katie would outright write to her parents about how she's being mistreated. And because of the snow job the Academy did on her parents, they disregarded every accusation. The interviews are damning and hard to listen to, especially as Katie and her friends recount their experiences. 
but these are told and edited in a way that makes them very engaging and even captivating. It's hard to praise the entertainment value of this because I don't want to give off the impression that this is something to take lightly or that its purpose is to charm or delight us. I mean, it is, though, just a well-crafted narrative detailing the crimes and offenses perpetrated on Katie, her friends, and then countless young people around the globe through this one organization. And these are accounts that should make us collectively want to gather the torches and pitchforks and then go serve some medieval justice on a whole bunch of terrible people. Now, for the sake of this video, I am not endorsing any sort of violence. But, you know, infer the point I'm making. So overall, the program Cons, Cults, and Kidnapping is a riveting expose, filmed and narrated in a personable manner. The participation in interviews of abuse survivors can be harrowing, but we also witness the cathartic effect telling their stories has. The footage and proof are both disgusting and heartbreaking. Yet the documentary doesn't leave audiences with a mournful or dire perspective. Instead, instilling hope these young people are helping bring to light atrocities that will help to bring about change. There's no sex or nudity, but a lot of profanity and then a ton of horrifying violence, both visually and then through written forms detailing out child abuse. Now, as a reminder, I don't give couch ratings to documentaries, but this is one of those that you should drop everything to watch. I mean, yeah, it is messed up and it's not a happy subject at all, but it's expertly crafted with a tremendously personal touch. All right, so to shift gears a bit, what are you looking forward to watching this week? I'd love to hear about it in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for couching with me.